Insulation. So there's a bunch of different kinds of insulation that you could put in your house. The attic insulation is specifically what we're going to talk about today. And I've been in thousands of attics and have seen all different kinds of attic insulation. According to building code today, depending on what zone or region, you know, what area you live, uh, Michigan's broken down into three different zones. You've got Southern, Central, and Northern. Building code requires an R value, and we'll get into the R value in a second, R value of 49 up to 60. So R value is how you measure the, the amount of insulation you have, and R value is the resistance of thermal heat or thermal transfer. And so depending on how much R value you have will de determine how much heat gets transferred either into your home from the summer heat and the heat in the attic transferring down into your home or the heat escaping in the winter time from inside the home into the attic. And so that insulation slows or reduces, lowers that transfer of heat. And if your insulation is compressed or compact, it's not going to be functioning properly at all. The purpose of insulation is to be expanded and have air like in between the different components of it so that that heat can get trapped and it slows the transfer of heat. And the thicker and the higher it is, the less the heat will transfer and escape out of whatever space that it's in. So there's different kinds of insulation that you can put in your attic or that you'll see in, in homes. And so if you pop your head up in your attic, you'll be able to identify whether you have what's called bat insulation, which is the rolled out uh, sheets of it. And they usually fit in between your trusses or your joists, whatever you have construction wise. Most homes today, are, they're all built with, um, majority of them are built with engineered trusses. And so in between those, you'll have an open space and then there will be insulation that will be rolled out inside there. Now depending on if your trusses were made with 2x6s or 2x4s and just depending on the size of your home, that bottom cord or the bottom piece is going to be 5.5 inches thick if it's a 2x6 or it's going to be 3.5 inches thick or high if it's a two by four and if you have rolled in insulation in there and the insulation just barely passes over that then you have roughly four inches or six inches of insulation building code today to get you to the r49 or r60 level r60 would kind of be the maximum that you want to would want to have in there r49 is the minimum and there's another caveat in there that can bring you down to r30 um, at code depending on how your home was constructed. To get to R49 you need 16 and a half inches of insulation. And so if you pop your head up in your attic and you have four, six, eight inches, you're already substantially below where you should be to be the most energy efficient that you could and uh, up to building code. 16 inches, I'm sorry, R60 is going to be 19, almost 20 inches of insulation. It's almost two feet of insulation in your attic space, which sounds like a lot, but it's, it's not that much money to be able to get you to that point. And the amount of money that you'll save on your energy bills is ridiculous. Not to mention the fact that you will, your, your HVAC system, your heater, your air conditioning will 
be extremely efficient and run a substantial amount less if you have that insulation, which will then drastically prolong the life of it. And that's a major expense to have to replace your air conditioning, your furnace, or your heat source. Um, it's very expensive to do that. Whereas insulation is very inexpensive and you'll instantly start saving money on your energy bills and then prolong the life of all of those things. Now on top of all of that, if you have properly ventilated roof and proper insulation, you will prolong the life of your roof substantially. Um, I've been in attics that were properly insulated and properly ventilated that were on uh, there was a 20 year shingle on there and they hadn't replaced the roof in 40 years. And it's like, how is this roof still look great or still functioning properly? And it's because they had proper insulation and they had proper ventilation. Those two things go hand in hand. So if you want to spend an, a lot of money on insulating your home, you'll want to buy the bat insulation, the rolled out kind. Uh, blown in insulation, there's a couple of different kinds of blown in, in insulation. Uh, cellulose, which is what a lot of insulation companies use as cellulose because it's very inexpensive for them to purchase. And they, it's recycled paper, essentially. It's all different kinds of paper products and uh, things like that that's ground up and made into this insulation. They install a, a spray it and soak it in a bunch of different chemicals to make it more fire retardant and mold resistant and whatnot. And then they blow that in there. It's extremely dusty and um, little fibers get everywhere. But it's a very, it's a pretty inexpensive product. But over time it will settle quite a bit. Um, quite a bit and you'll lose the more it settles the less air gaps that you have in there and so uh, the lower your R value is and um, and so over time it will be degrading and settling and settling and settling even more and you will lose the R value of that uh, of that product so that's cellulose I'm not a fan of cellulose just because I've been in a ton of attics that have cellulose in them and a lot of them have settled down and they're just extremely messy and dust is everywhere and um, I'm just, I'm personally not a fan of them. Does it do the purpose? I'm sure it does, otherwise they wouldn't sell it. Uh, but I, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm a fan of blown in fiberglass insulation um, and more specifically we use Owens Corning ProCat. Uh, which is their professional grade um, insulation. When it, when it settles, it settles at what you blew it in at, and then it settles at that. So it, over time, it's gonna maintain its, um, its air gaps and its R value over time, and um, it's gonna take years and years and years and years and years for it to settle down to, to where it starts losing R value and it's very inexpensive in the scheme of things and it functions fantastically. You know, you take a company like Owens Corning uh, that is a fiberglass company and yes, they do make roofing materials and yes, they do um, make other things, but they are a fiberglass insulation company and everybody's heard of the Pink Panther. That's what they do and, um, and that's the product that we use and that we like and so bottom line you want a properly ventilated roof with the proper amount of insulation what that does for you specifically is it makes you more comfortable in your home so those homes and those rooms those rooms in your home that have super higher you know, it's like hotter in that room in the summertime um, that will reduce because you will uh, have more insulation in there and so the insulation won't or the heat won't transfer down into that room 
and you'll keep the, the cooler air uh, in there in the summertime. And then in the wintertime, when it's colder in your house and you're constantly running, your furnace is constantly running, it's gonna keep, the insulation is gonna keep the heat inside your home and it won't prematurely melt. It won't, that heat won't end up in your attic. It won't prematurely melt the snow on your roof, which will then cause your, uh, ice dams, which will then destroy your roof faster than anything besides a tornado or a hailstorm or, or something like that. Ice dams are the installation or uh, the installment plan for destroying your roof over a short period of time. You know, a few years with ice dams you're gonna need to replace your roof. And so proper insulation and proper ventilation will prevent that, um, literally prevent it. You, you won't get ice dams. Your neighbor could have icicles from the gutters to the ground and you'll have zero uh, with proper insulation and proper ventilation. The installation of insulation in your attic is a pretty simple process. Um, obviously, tarps get laid down from the entrance up to where the entrance entrance of your home to the entrance of the uh, attic space, and then uh, a long hose goes from the machine that's outside and blows, it separates and blows that insulation through that tube and somebody is up in your attic. And a little uh, paper rulers are installed all over the attic so that you can, whoever's up there blowing the insulation in can see, you know, how high they gotta get it to. Because when you're in that space, you know, we put lights up in there and we we'll use two by, or, um, uh, cut down sheets of uh, plywood to navigate through the attic and be able to uh, get down in those spots and systematically work our way from the furthest point back to the uh, entryway, uh, whatever, wherever, whatever type of entrance that is. When you get to the entryway, uh, cardboard uh, kind of baffle will be installed around that entryway to allow for somebody to be in the entryway with that, fill it all in around all of that. And on the back of the hatch will be, bat insulation will get installed on the back of that to get you up to that R value so that you don't just have this, you know, lid uh, or, or end doorway that is letting heat right through that space. You know, you, you kind of want it in everywhere. And so that's, the process of installing it and then clean up uh, takes place. It should take uh, less than one day to be able to do a pretty good size attic. Uh, if we have to install baffles, it, then that's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, a lot of times what we find is that, you know, we're replacing the roof and then we find out they need attic insulation and so we'll make sure that there's baffles installed while we're doing the roof typically. Um, if we have to replace any of the wood down in there, we'll install those baffles at that time while we're replacing the wood and then being able to come in and, and blow in the insulation at that time. So let's go back to uh, what I was saying earlier about being able to bring it down to an R30 value. If you don't have what's called a heel truss or an energy efficient truss, uh, that's a truss that's designed that has a higher, uh, it has like a buildup on it. To, it essentially raises your roof up a little bit so that you have more consistent, uh, or you, you have that consistent depth of insulation all the way to the outside walls. Um, and if you don't have those trusses, those engineered energy trusses or heel trusses, if you don't have those, what's gonna happen is your roof is going to come down and hit those walls but when it when the roof line meets those walls or the bot you know the top of the walls or the bottom of of that area if you're looking in your attic and you look down if if that doesn't have those raised trusses you're losing the height 
when it gets to that wall. And if you don't have proper baffling installed in that whole area, and you just have insulation packed down in those, those crevices, for one, you don't have the height to get to 24 inches at that wall. And so the closer to the wall that you get, the, to that inside wall, so like this wall here, if that was an inside wall, um, once you, the closer you get to that wall there, the less insulation you have, the less thickness, the less air gaps you're gonna have. You, you just aren't gonna, it's not gonna be properly insulated. And so you could have heat, you know, blowing into this space and then it is circulating, heat rises, and so it circulates over to that area. It's gonna transfer right through right there. And what is right there? A place where it can melt the snow and then start causing ice dams. And so there's, um, if you don't have those raised or energy efficient trusses, you're kind of in a pickle because uh, there's not much you can do with that besides making sure it's properly ventilated and make sure the rest of your attic is properly insulated. Those two things can really, really reduce your risk of ice dams. The other thing is, is uh, or if you do have a newer home that was constructed with those energy, truss, energy efficient trusses um, or heel trusses, you'll you'll have plenty of space there to be able to get the insulation properly around the entire footprint of your attic space. So insulation is very valuable and very inexpensive. That's the gist of, of the story. Check out our last video on should I get multiple quotes?